One day, Gordon returned to the big station late and feeling stuffed up. What's wrong with you then? Fireman says it's the coal, grunted Gordon. It's locking up my tube, something awful, but I'll have to lump it for the time being. Why not have a good sneeze, suggested Henry, thinking of the time when he had punished some boys for dropping stones on him. That'll clear your troops. Certainly not, replied Gordon with dignity. The fat controller wouldn't approve. He didn't like your sneeze, as I recall. Next day, Gordon was nervous as he backed onto the express. But if I don't keep time, I suppose they shall laugh at me again. By the time they approached Edward Station, Gordon's fireman began to make up the fire. Let's gotta run up the hill while you've still got steam, he muttered. I don't trust this low grade coal. At the station, a party of wedding guests, all in their best clothes, were standing on the platform. As Gordon swooshed through, running hard for the hill, smoke from the fire streamed from his funnel. He disappeared leaving a black smoke screen settling on the station. It covered everything, wedding guests and all, in a coat of soot and smut. Cheerful waves became angry fists, and the wedding party hurried to the station master's office. At the end of the line, an inspector came to see Gordon. His message was short, but not sweet. It's not fair, Gordon complained to Bear. How could I help the smoke? But it's not my fault, the coal's filthy. Coal turns to me, quipped Bear. Listen, if I got upset every time someone called me smelly, where would I be? Anyhow, such good for the garden, so my driver says. Not for new clothes, grumbled Gordon as he left for his return train. Gordon was extra careful on his way home, but it was not his lucky day. The fat controller had broken a journey to the other railway to apologise to the wedding guests at Edward Station. He had done the best he could and was waiting for a connection for his meeting on the mainland when Gordon thundered by. As the train rattled through, a cloud of something flew from a carriage, landing on the butter controller's brand new top hat. When Gordon reached the big station, there was another message waiting. The fat controller says, announced to the inspector, that Gordon blew ashes onto his top hat as he passed Edward Station. Oh, exclaimed Gordon indignantly. I most certainly did not, but I was being extra careful. I'm sure the fat controller started the fireman. We can't help what the fat controller sees, said the inspector finally. That's how it is. He will speak to Gordon when he gets home. Gordon trundled sadly to the sheds. Henry took the express for the next few days. Soon, however, Gordon was allowed to take expresses once more. Driver says the fat controller comes back today, said James brightly. Why will he be on the express? 
Gordon wasn't anxious to see the Fat Controller. I must do well today, he said to himself. A good run could help if the Fat Controller hears about it. Things did not begin well, however. A last-minute passenger meant they were late starting, which led to Gordon missing his path at the junction. Never mind, comforted Derek. Slow and steady wins the race. Gordon grunted. He puffed away. With a clear run after that, they flashed through Edward Station. As they approached the hill, however, there was a clatter beneath Gordon's cab. A blast of cold air went through his middle, as if there was a gap between his cab and boiler. Oh, he gasped. What happened? The fireman peered through the fire. A gaping hole was in the middle, where the fire bars had collapsed. You've lost your fire, the fireman shouted. Oh, what a place to do it. Already, Gordon felt weaker. Without a full fire, his steam pressure and speed fell quickly. Find the biggest piece of coal you can and put it across the hole. That'll stop the coal air from getting in, so we can hold steam better. Hurry now! The fireman hurried, moving a large lump of coal quickly with a shovel and a long steel bar. Gordon felt better at once. Right, Gordon. It's up to you. Gordon tried his hardest, but it was tough going. I must do it. I will do it. I must do it. I will do it. He told himself as he pounded the hill. Poor Gordon felt quite breathless. He shut his eyes and struggled on. At last, Gordon felt the slope was easier to climb. He cautiously opened one eye. He was nearly at the top. I have done it, he gasped triumphantly. The fireman mopped his brow. Oh, well done, Gordon. Absolutely fantastic. A signalman let them stop at the next station and called for a pilot engine. Boko arrived, and they finished the journey without further trouble. When they reached the end of the line, Gordon was surprised to see the fat controller on the platform. Thank you, Boko, he said, and thank you, Gordon, for a splendid effort. I am pleased with your work today. And I think you have more than made up for your smokescreen last week. But sir, your top hat was not your fault, actually. A steward was emptying an ashtray from a carriage window, you see. I see, murmured Gordon. Boko here shall take you to the works, where you shall have new fire bars fitted, finished the fat controller. You couldn't ask for more, could you? grinned Boko as the two engines departed for the works. Couldn't be better, couldn't be better, Gordon chortled as he was cold up at the works. The workmen were checking him over when there was a coughing sound from the station. <coughs> What's going on? he asked. <coughs> oh, Henry's failed. Bad quality kill from the mainland, apparently. Would you mind taking over the train? I'd be delighted, replied the big engine, and he made his way to the station. <coughs> Bad quality girl? Gordon asked sweetly. Well, never mind. Perhaps a good sneeze will clear your tubes. Henry sighed as Gordon left for the big station at the end of the line.